the next part of this is communications topology. So what I'm, what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start talking about kind of old school SCADA communications, old school serial pole response communications. So most of you guys, if I recall correctly, are kind of in the IT infrastructure. So you guys are real familiar with IP addressing and switch configurations and routers and all that kind of good stuff, right? Well, this kind of communications in these old legacy systems is not like that, all right? So I want you guys to understand these legacy communications at, at a rather high level. So there's three basic kinds of communications in old serial pole response networks. There's point to point, point to multipoint, and point to point to point. So I'm gonna break this down for you a little bit. All right, so this is a simple diagram of point to point. If you think about this from a communications topology standpoint, this looks like dial-up modems, where every, one, every time the host needs to talk to an RTU, it's got to tell the modem to dial a remote location and dial it up. So from a phone system, and I'm talking about wired phones like it, we used to have at our houses, that is a private line, okay? I pick it up, I dial a number, it goes through a switch, and it connects me point to point to another handset someplace else. So that's point to point communications. Point to multi-point communications, the analogy there would be, a, is anybody here old enough to remember party lines? <laughs> Sorry, how many people did I shame? <laughs> I was actually doing this class in Wyoming, gosh, probably eight or nine years ago, and one of the guys goes, I still got a party line. He kind of lived out in the woods. Anyway, so party line was, I picked the line up, and everybody on that party line, if they pick it up, they can all hear me, right? So one conversation, and everybody hears that conversation. So that's point to multipoint. So from a radio analogy, what's the analogy to point to multipoint? What happens in a radio network when we key up the mic and we want to talk to one radio that's a slave behind the master. Everybody hears what's broadcast, and only the guy who's addressed answers back, right? So this, this kind of reality about point to multipoint, most of the radio systems that are out there are point to multipoint systems. Even some of the newer IP systems, all that means is they support that kind of addressing they're still point to multipoint. Everybody behind the master hears when the broadcast is made. Now, some of the guys that do, um, you know, some of the mesh type networks and such, what they're doing is they're just kind of taking the master and distributing it around. But at the bottom level, they're all still point to multipoint. So why does point to multipoint matter? Sharing bandwidth. I can only talk to one person at a time, right? Right, exactly, okay? So there's also point to point to point. So this analogy would be kind of, here's a telephone switch, and then I'm going through a microwave backbone, and then I'm splitting it out, right? So we do things like this in SCADA systems. Most places, we're either going IP all the way out to the remote, or we're going IP as far as we can down the wire, and at the last place we can, we convert that IP to serial, right? So what I'm driving at here is kind of underlying everything we do, all the remote telemetry, all the stuff we're doing in the field is narrow band, pole response, point multipoint communications, okay? Now that's important when you start understanding how to design, configure, and maintain a radio network. All right, so in general, point to point have better performance, higher cost. Let me, let me tell you what I mean by that. This always gets a little confusing. If I'm dialing up and I'm using a dial-up modem, 
what's basically going on is I've got some overhead to establish the communication connection, but once I have it established, my communications is assured, right? In point to multipoint, I try to communicate and then I wait a period of time and then I try again and then I wait a period of time and then I try again, right? So what happens in a point to multipoint when I have some bad actors, in other words, people that won't respond when I call out for them. I have to ask questions so I can drink water and rest my voice. What happens? Yeah, what happens to the system when some of the devices are not responding? Go ahead. Slows down your communication. Slows down. It's actually exponential, okay? So you can actually do this math. So if my standard communication session is 30 seconds, right? From the time I send the request out until I get the answer back. Good solid communication is 30 seconds, right? Well, if I have, it, if I have my timeout set for one minute with three, with three retries, that means every bad actor is using six times the communications time as the good guys. So if I start getting bad actors in my system, it bogs the whole system down, right? What a lot of people have done, I don't think it's as prevalent now as it was when uh, spread spectrum was really starting to proliferate, but when spread, spread spectrum started to proliferate, it was inexpensive, you could put it up, and it would start communicating immediately, you just kind of put it in, you pointed at a tower, and we're golden. Well, over time, what would happen is the communications performance would go down. So what's the first thing people would do when the communications performance rolled down? Well, instead of doing three retries, retries, I'll do five. Instead of a 60 second timeout, I'll do a 90 second timeout. So I just made everything worse, right? So the thing about radio networks is they have to be engineered and you need to understand what's going on and a few bad actors have kind of an exponential negative impact in the, on the overall system, okay? So that's it for, for people that don't work in this stuff, that's a key takeaway. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, before I get into talking about media, I wanna talk about this uh, in one other context. So with, with flow computers, particularly gas flow computers, there's various protocols. There's PCCU and uh, ABB, uh, there's Enron Modbus, there's Rocklink, right? And these are custom protocols designed to pull back all these measurement data. So Enron Modbus tends to pull back big messages. So it will run in good, com good communications, it'll run well and bring the data back quickly. But in bad communications, it just won't bring the data back. The ABB protocol actually takes all these, you know, these big messages and dices them up into a whole lot of smaller messages. And if it times out and needs to retry, it picks up from where it stopped. Or then Ron Modbus, it starts back at the beginning. So in marginal communications, I can actually get the total flow protocol through. But in good communications, it's slower than in Ron Modbus. Okay, so really what I'm, what I'm wanting you to take out of this, guys, is that when you start talking about these radio networks and particularly the last mile, when I start getting really out on the, you know, the ragged edge of the telemetry, managing and maintaining those things is complicated. And if you have large, system, large systems, it requires some engineering effort and some administrative effort to monitor and optimize these things. And it's because of this point, multi-point, you know, I, I have to wait until you don't answer back problem. All right, so let's talk about